Hello and welcome to this fourth session <coughs> of the Oracle 11G Rackathon online conference at the Brain Surface. Thank you everybody for attending. Joining us for the fourth session today is Dr. Bert Scalzo. Uh, Dr. Scalzo is an Oracle ACE and has been an IT technologist for 25 plus years. He has a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD in computer science long with a bunch of other industry designations. Uh, he is a regular uh, figure at the within the Oracle speaking circuit. Thanks for joining us, Bart. Glad to be here. Joining us for the fourth time uh, in this conference is Sayyid Jafar Hussain. He is an Oracle ace and the author of the upcoming Oracle 11G Rack Handbook. Thanks for joining us, Sayed. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. Also joining us for the fourth time is Oracle Ace Jeremy Schneider. He is a RAC and a Linux certified expert. He is the author of the Oracle RAC Attack Lab Handbook and also a regular figure within the Oracle speaking circuit. Thanks for participating, Jeremy. So the topic, the three main topics of our session today are Oracle Rack Internals, Cache Fusion, and Performance Tuning. Uh, we will begin with the Oracle Rack Internals part uh, with Syed. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it, hand it over to Syed. Uh, thank you, Tariq. Uh, <coughs> uh, thank you, everyone, once again. Uh, this is Syed Jaffa. Today, I'm going to cover the topic about uh, Rack Internals. Before we really going to kick off things, I would like to say that Considering the time limitation and amount of topic to be covered in this session, we are going to focus on a limited, but at the same time, important topic in each segment. So, therefore, in this uh, rack internal segment, I'm going to cover the following topic. Like, uh, we are going to discuss uh, what happens when a node comes up and how does the cluster stack startup sequence would be. And also, we are going to understand the heartbeat mechanism and the importance of heartbeat mechanism as well and the functionality of voting this, what, why we have voting this, and what is the use of voting this. And then we move, uh, move to the next level, like talk about a little bit on speed brain resolution. And towards the end of this topic, I'm also going to give you outline few of the in, uh, uh, node reboot, uh, reboot causes. Next slide, please. All right, now here is the node startup sequence. So <clears throat> you might be administrating a rack database or maybe a cluster, so you might wonder something to know how things get started up when a node is rebooted or boots up. So this picture talks about what happens actually when a node reboots. So here is the sequence for you. So generally when a node uh, boots up, it is the underlying operating system that comes up first. So the operating system could be Windows, Linux, or Unix, whatever it may be. And if you don't have a vendor level clusterware, it will be Oracle clusterware that will be sitting on the operating system. So <clears throat> after the operating system startup, your clusterware will start up automatically. So we are going to discuss more about how Oracle cluster stack will start up in the subsequent slides. Right? So once the clusterware is up and running, it is the virtual IP services on the server will be will be coming online. So once your virtual IP services are online, then the ASM instance across all the nodes is going to start up. So once the ASM instance is start up, you will see all your ASM disks are available to the uh, to the all databases, and the disk groups that have already created will be will be mounted automatically. So once ASM is successfully start up your uh, instances, RDBMS instance on that particular node will be started automatically. And then followed by the listener. When the listener is available, all your connections can use this listener to connect to the database. And then at the end of the sequence, your services, if you have any services defined, that will become up and running. Next slide, please. All right. All right, <clears throat> so 
Here we are going to discuss about Oracle Clusterware Stack Startup Sequence in pre-11G Release 2, which means 10G Release 2 or maybe 11G Release 1, because 11G Release 2 have a bit different things to get started. So now let's understand the details of Clusterware Startup Sequence and daemon processes. As I said in the previous slide that when a node boots up, it is the underlying operating system that starts up immediately. It could be Windows or uh, any Unix platform. So there are different things. If you are on Windows, the Clusterware stack will start up using the Windows services. Now if you are on Linux or Unix platform, the things are started differently. So once, let's now talk about uh, how things start up for the Clusterware in Linux. Now once the OS is up and running, it reads the init tab where it has all the instruction to bring up your clusterware automatically. If you look at the entries in the etc init tab file, you see at the bottom of the file these instructions that what to start your clusterware. And by the way, these entries will be added during the cluster configuration time, which is when you run the root.ss file at the point of a clusterware configuration, these entries are added to the file. So this entry basically starts up your cluster automatically. If you remove this, excuse me, uh, previous slide please. If you remove these entries, your clusterware will not start automatically. You can also enable, disable the clusterware auto startup and uh, things like that. And you can also manually start the cluster. Now, if you look at the first entry that is calling INIT EVMD script, in turn, which call up INT.CRS script. So if you look at the number one cluster stack with the uh, init CSSD demand process, which is cluster synchronization demand process. This is the first process that comes up and <coughs> that brings up the OC SSD BNI file, which is the demand process. And it reads the outing disk to form the cluster. So basically the job of cluster synchronization is to provide the cluster group membership and monitor the cluster wave via the heartbeat mechanism. And also it turn, in turn it starts a couple of other processes like uh, OPROG-D and CLSMN demand process. And then <clears throat> the second demand process that comes up is event management demand process. Basically which is responsible to publish the events upon detecting anything in the cluster. And also it is responsible to execute kind of callouts. A callout is a specific action to run on a specific event. When something goes down, you want to have your own defined rule that you want to, to be run on that particular event, you can do the callouts. And finally, it brings up the cluster ready services, which basically engine for high availability operations. So this cluster ready service demand process basically reads and updates the cluster registry OCR file and this is used to manage and monitor the cluster resources like listener, instance, ASM and also whenever you update something using the SRV CTL command like when you add or remove, enable, disable resources, it will be automatically updated in your OCR file. Next slide please. All right. Now here we talk about the 11G release to stack startup sequence. What we have learned in the previous slide was it was pre-11G release 2. Here things are a bit different. Although the concept is same, but here you see the demand processes not like in the past previous versions. So as I said, node boots up and subsequently OS starts up and it reads the init tab file. Now you see there is only one entry in the init tab, which is calling Oracle High Availability Service Demand Script. All right. So these entries will be added during the execution of root.sh at the time of your cluster configuration. So it is the init.ohsd cell script that basically starts up your Oracle High Availability Demand process. In turn, it starts three more processes like ORA agent, ORA root agent, and CSD agent. And each of these processes again will run some more processes. Now let's talk about ORA root agent that bin. So it has too many processes. For example, like a CSSD monitor process to start up. This process, this monitor, uh, sorry, this process is responsible to monitor the node hangs 
as well as uh, cluster synchronization hangs. And then you have cluster ready service demand process. And the cluster ready demand process again start up two more processes like aura agent and aura root agent and these are responsible to start the services like oracle uh, uh, ons and asm instance database instance listener scan listener and aura root is like virtual ip scan ip global resource and all these things and css agent is responsible to bring up your cluster synchronization demand process next screen please All right. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, okay. This picture is going to talk about what we have learned in the previous slide. So don't be panic yourself looking at the picture because it is Oracle responsibility to manage these things. This picture basically tells you how the things get started up in 11G release 2. So there is init process that is triggering the OHS AD demand process stands for uh, high availability service demand, then bring up so your root, call, uh, root agent or agent and bring other sessions. Next screen please. All right, uh, this image basically shows different levels how they get start up clearly and it is the same picture that we have spoken in the previous slide. So this is slightly uh, clearer than the previous one. Uh, it is the same that I have explained in the slide two that how things get start up. Can we go to next slide please? All right, now here comes the important topic like uh, what is heartbeat mechanism and what is the use of heartbeat mechanism. Uh, to start with, the heartbeat mechanism is very important to determine who is in and who is not part of the cluster and this is maintained by the cluster synchronization demand process. So in Oracle cluster where we have two types of heartbeats, one is network heartbeat and the second one is disk heartbeat. We also call it as coding disk heartbeat. So in a cluster environment, when you have two or more nodes, it is always important that all the nodes, they are communicates to each other and they have the synchronized information. To maintain the integrity and to know who is part and who is not, this mechanism, heartbeat mechanism is very important. So in the network heartbeat mechanism, it does uh, over the private interconnect and every node performs uh, network heartbeat every second. For any reason, if the node is unable to send the not big heart, not, uh, network heartbeat to the another node within a limited period of time, which is 30 seconds by default, the node will evict. And you can see the messages if uh, in case of is there is anything wrong with your network, you can go to the, you can refer the log, OCSSD log, which we will tell you at the end of this presentation where to go. And secondly, voting disk, <coughs> heartbeat. So uh, likewise, network heartbeat, you have to do, uh, every node has to do the disk heartbeat as well. So every node of the cluster writes a disk heartbeat to ordering disk every second. And also it reads the kill block every second to commit suicide in case of requirement. So to tell you that every node in general have two blocks in a ordering disk. One is old block, another is kill block. We'll talk more about this in the later slide, uh, in the coming slides. Next slide please. In order to know what is the default setting set for your cluster, you can simply run this command, CRSCTL, get CSS, put your parameter name and we'll give, tell you what is the default value for this. So we have more default values to discuss here. For example, <coughs> uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, disk timeout, disk timeout basically tells you the maximum of time allowed for outing this IO to complete. So def by default it is 200 seconds. In case if you have any delay in the I/O updating a node to the disk, you can wait for 200 seconds, which I believe is more than enough. And also we have a miss count, which is by default set to 30 seconds. If you don't get the network heartbeat in 30 seconds, your node is going to evict. 